So, when, when did you uh, find out that your daughter, there was something a little different about your daughter? Probably when she was around the age of four. Mm -hmm. um, as I've told you before, my, my husband is dyslexic. So we were kind of looking for it. We weren't exactly sure what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. Other than, you know, at some point we'd realize if the kid was dyslexic, they'd have trouble in school, right? Yeah. So um, my son, you know, showed that he had no problems. But then uh, around about age of four, my daughter, well, maybe even age of three, my daughter was in preschool and she was not reaching a lot of the milestones that a lot of the other kids were doing you could tell in school and um, you know her she she couldn't associate letters and sounds uh, couldn't recognize shapes um, you know but she had you know you know she had the intellect because of things that she would do she also was a late talker and so she had a lot of speech issues at that point she was substituting sounds so completely different words were coming out than what she intended, which then made it really hard to have a conversation because you're trying to figure out what she said without saying what, what all the time, which mm -hmm. would get very frustrating for both of us. And, um, you know, so it was around uh, four, uh, four and a half that we decided uh, to have her screened for speech issues. And about at that same point, we discovered uh, Dr. Sally Shaywood's book, Overcoming Dyslexia. And my husband, you know, read the book first and actually read an excerpt and said, you know, this is the first thing I've ever read that really describes what I think has gone on in my head and gone on in my life yeah. that uh, makes sense. And so we started looking at the list that she had of early warning signs. Mm -hmm. And like out of the 10, I could check off nine. And we're like, OK, maybe it's not just a speech issue. Maybe it really is uh, dyslexia as well. So from that moment forward, that was our focus, and that's how we started talking to everybody, whether it was her speech therapist. I said, you know, we're treating the speech, but we got to keep in mind the dyslexia and, and how we can marry the two to be the most beneficial until we had a chance to do a full-blown evaluation to see, indeed, that she was dyslexic. So that's kind of how we started, and, and um, you know, I went in, you know, when – we got going into the school system thinking that, okay, I have all this wonderful information. Here you go. Since it's been, what, 30 some years since my husband was in school, things had to be better. And they weren't. It was kind of a, a kind of a surprise that I seemed to know more than they did. So you, you, you were a co-founder of uh, Decoding Dyslexia? Yeah, about a year and a half ago, um, about eight of us um, went to a luncheon in uh, New York City. Uh, for the uh, NCLD, National Center of Learning Disabilities. And we knew some, you know, I knew a couple people in the group. I didn't know everybody. And we started sharing our stories and realized how similar our experiences had been as far as trying to get services for our kids in our public schools. And, you know, we're from all different parts of New Jersey. So you can't just say it's because you're from this region or that region or whatever. And it really made us open our eyes that, one, we weren't alone because you kind of feel isolated in your own little hometown. And, two, that this problem was statewide. And we kind of knew, but it just it was just more clear at that point of how widespread, you know, the lack of understanding the public schools seem to have about kids with dyslexia. So we, at that point, you know, we said, you know, let's, let's get together. Let's see if we can do something about this. And a month later, we set up our first meeting, had a you know, few couple uh, additional people come to the meeting, and we've been going strong ever since. And, you know, we, we set up our mission where we wanted to um, empower families. We want to help parents see if they can see if we can help them shorten that learning curve that we all went through, that maybe they can start finding the answers a little faster. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to be a resource for them. Uh, we wanted to educate the public. You know, how many times do you hear, oh, dyslexia, that's when you read and, and, and see things backwards, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we all cringe when, when we hear yeah. that. And uh, so we wanted to dispel a lot of the myths. We wanted to show people that, you know, dyslexics are intelligent people. They just, unfortunately, they learn differently. And that, you know, short changes them a lot in many areas. And then the last piece is we wanted to see policy, policy change. Because it was our, you know, our understanding that unless something, you know, happened from from the state level down, nothing was going to change at the district level. 
So we so we've been working on all three parts of our mission ever since. All right. Well, Liz Barnes from dyslexia from speaking of dyslexia from decoding dyslexia. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. You're very welcome, and good luck to you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thanks.